Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a really fun knife overview and presentation to share with you guys. This is absolutely not a review because these knives are, uh, you know, way out of the general budget range for most people, including me. Um, and uh, they're also very rare, very limited, and definitely collector's items. So it makes no sense to review them. But I still want to do an overview and presentation because my goodness, are these incredible. Um, these were sent to me by uh, Scott at Sierra underscore, uh, underscore Bound on Instagram. Give him a follow. It's worth giving him a follow just to look at his collection. Seriously, I think he has the most impressive collection in the entire knife community. <laughs> I was hesitant to say that for a while, but after he recently uploaded a picture of his of his actual entire collection, I don't I don't I honestly don't think I've ever seen a, a knife collection um, that is more impressive than his. So give him a follow if for nothing else, just to take a look at his um, collection. These will go back to him when I'm done. I don't get to keep these. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So what are the knives? Stop talking. Um, you probably know this is actually a uh, rotten Evo. Uh, Custom Knife Factory and Rotten Evo 2.0 in uh, woo, the uh, Zerka tie and uh, Damascus Steel. And then we have the new Rotten Evo 3.0 in uh, um, Zerka tie and Damascus Steel. Now, let's get a couple of things out of the way. Those look like gas station knives. No, they don't. Gas station knives uh, look like these knives. These are the knives that gas station knives desperately attempt to copy. Even if that is the case, I find those gaudy. Most people do. That's just the fact. There are very few people who actually find these knives attractive, and the people who make them know that. Uh, these are limited run knives. They are absolutely not created for everybody. They are created for very few people. Uh, the people who specifically seek out these materials on their knives because they appreciate elements that go beyond utility. That sounds really snobby and nose in the air, right? But it's just, it's factually true. Everything that I said is factually true. There is a reason that gas station knives look the way that they do. And it's, you know, it's, it's because the custom knife market has looked not exactly like this, but like this for a long, long time. The crazy exotic materials and the bright colors, right? It's just, you know, when you keep climbing the ladder, generally speaking, knives tend to look more and more and more insane. Not always, it's not perfectly consistent, but they do look like that. And the difference between something like this and a gas station knife is, of course, that these are not, uh, this isn't paint, right? Uh, these are materials that have changed color due to an anodizing process, right? The materials themselves are definitely what I would call exotic, for lack of a better word. Uh, and then uh, the colors come from an anodizing process. Basically, we have different compositions of titanium mixed in, in this case with zirconium. And those different compositions of titanium change color because they anodize at different rates. On top of that, the blade steel is not a simple Damascus. This is, in this case, Damascus steel, which is proprietary uh, from the Damascus steel company. It is uh, always, very specifically, a combination of PMC-27 and RWL-34, which are both powder form steels. And they create something that is both beautiful and takes a high polish, but also performs extremely well. Common consensus on knives like this is that they are specifically art knives and are therefore delicate and cannot actually be used. It's incorrect. They're actually just as durable as the uh, the standard models. Um, they're just extremely pretty, and you know, generally speaking, these knives don't get used, uh, even by people who you know have lots and lots and lots of things like this, right? can afford to buy lots and lots of lots of things like this. They are often just collected. But if the end user, uh, user so chose, they could absolutely be used and would serve very, very well. Um, now, <laughs> this is more so to answer uh, a lot of these common, you know, I, I get a lot of this stuff and I know that there's a lot of new people here and this helps mitigate, you know, that kind of thing. And it also helps answer some questions that I know new people have, right? Um, but, uh, you know, with all of that being said, I want to go ahead and move on here. Um, I have reviewed both of these knives. Uh, the less expensive, they're still very expensive, but the less expensive standard models. If you want to go back and get my thoughts on the actual design of the knife, um, then you can absolutely do that by just typing in Metal Complex Rotten Evo 3.0. But if you want to stay and hear my thoughts on these, basically what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here is gush over this because I find 
these uh, builds extremely interesting. I'm going to go ahead and get a measurement real quick of both of these. Overall length is coming in at, uh, on the 2.0, it's coming in at 8 inches. You guys probably know this because the 2.0 has been out for a while. And then the actual blade length is coming in at about 3.65 with the cutting edge coming in much shorter at only 3.25 thanks to the large choil. The 3.0, which is definitely my favorite of the two, is coming in at just shy of 8.5 inches, about 8.3, 8.4 four inches, something like that. And then your blade length, I don't know if you can quite call it a four inch blade, it's about 3.9 inch blade and your cutting edge is coming in at three and a half inches. You might classify these as semi-custom, but they are largely production knives. I don't know of any part of the knife that is actually hand done. Um, the, uh, the I, I believe that's the case, right? They're just extremely, extremely expensive production knives. Now, the, the upside of that is that, you know, with handmade custom knives, oftentimes there is more room for error because human beings are not machines and we make mistakes. Machines make mistakes too, but at the, the level of quality that these are at, which is just above and beyond, they're, they're essentially perfect. And both of them have action that is just absolutely insane, completely and totally fall shut, exactly what you want, right? The people who are actually buying this type of stuff, not the people who are looking at it, right? And just thinking who would ever, right? The people who are actually buying this type of stuff, these knives have those elements, right? They have all of the fit and finish details that you want, right? In fact, it's it's weird, like my, uh, I have the all black one, which I, I know most people are gonna say, like most people watching this video are gonna go, that one looks way better, right? I don't like the gaudy, that's the word that people default to, gaudy. It's just colorful. I guess people, some people just don't like, you know, all the wild and crazy colors. And the truth is, is that I didn't either for the longest time. I did not like um, my knives to look rainbowy, right? I wanted them to look serious, right? It's a serious thing. I take this seriously. So I need it to be black or gray or maybe some combination of the two because colorful things cannot be serious. And then I remember at some point graduating into a territory where I thought, well, that's ridiculous. Why do I care, right? Well, you want to be stealthy. That's why, right? I got to be stealthy. I don't want to, you know, a real big shiny pocket clip like this. You're going to be able to see it. <laughs> from, from where? Who? Who's going to see you? Where are you sneaking off to, right? What ninja tactical stuff are you doing day to day, right? Obviously, this is not the knife that would be carried in a scenario like that, but it's hilarious to introduce that scenario to this conversation. Um, <laughs> just find that really funny. Um, but yeah, at some point, I, I took an interest in the materials themselves. And once I realized what it was, right, it's really cool. It's titanium Damascus, right? Damascus itself is really interesting. There's always somebody who has to point out that the original, it's not original Damascus because the recipe for original Damascus is lost to time, woots, this or that, right? I had one person one time claim that they actually knew the secret, um, but it was too complicated to explain in text and that they had been studying with some monks on some mountains or something and had discovered it. It was a really interesting conversation. But yeah, he he, he claims to know the secret and won't, uh, won't disclose it with anybody. So somebody down in the comments knows <laughs> knows it. So this particular, you know, this combination of um, compositions yields a, a really, really beautiful and very performance oriented damage steel. I love these patterns up here. I think this is really cool. And I know that this was done on purpose where it's like real complicated and then they have some kind of, uh, there's like a um, transition in between here and then it comes down to kind of the straighter lines. Um, I wish that they had just continued with this same pattern all the way through. The pattern on this 3.0, is kind of the same thing, but not really. It looks a little bit more like the outside of Saturn than we come down into the, uh, you know, kind of the, the little, um, the straighter lines down there. Really nice. What I, uh, what I like, I, I'm used to Timascus looking more like this, like especially Zirconium Timascus uh, or Zircotai, right? But this is really spectacular. I want to give you guys a close up of this because I know that that's why, you know, anybody who's left. Um, I want to give you guys a close-up of this. Um, there's a lot of zirconium in here, and the um, the layers of titanium that have been anodized are really subtle. So what you see is a lot. It's very, very busy. There's a lot of layers in here, and then we see these 
faint glowing areas of blue and it's just absolutely beautiful of course it's polished on top of that i um you know for the price of these which i'll tell you i know people are wanting to know get ready right this is usually the most offensive part of the video for a lot of people uh, this guy down here i don't know what the original one went for probably less right given how long ago it was um, but, uh, this guy right here, I'm pretty sure those went for something like 1800 unless they have changed the original listing. The listing that I went back and looked at listed this guy down here, the bigger guy at 1800. Right. Are they marked up? Well, certainly everything, everything is right. But this is, you know, I think, I, I think a lot of people look at this stuff and they think it couldn't possibly be more than like what, a one or $200 knife and they're marking it up $1,600. Absolutely not. These are still incredibly expensive materials. And you have to consider they have to perfectly machine them. Not slop. I'm not, it's not like a Smith & Wesson pocket knife that's made in China is not machined the same way that something like this. Not even close. Something like this is machined within one one thousandth of an inch. All of the parts are perfectly machined. They have to be, right? Not just so the knife will function properly, but because the people who are actually going to buy this stuff are going to critique it. The people who are actually buying it and handling it are going to critique it. They're going to get it under a magnifying glass. They're going to do what I'm doing right now, right, and get close-ups and things. On top of that, the materials that are used. Zircatai is not an inexpensive material, right? Damasteel is definitely not an inexpensive material. On top of that, you have to shape it. You have to finish it. You have to finish it properly. Nothing about any of this can be lazy. This process, all of the labors involved, right, no matter how automated they are, uh, they take a long time. There's a lot of wear and tear on equipment. There's a lot of checking and making sure that the quality control is there. And all of that costs money. And a lot of that goes back into the knife. And then they have to mark it up a little bit to make sure that they make money. Is Are they making quite a bit on these? Well, yeah. But also, mm, there's a lot that goes into them, right? So the people who are actually buying them are very happy to pay. So it's one of those things where these are elements of the knife world, especially the custom knife world that are very confusing and shocking, right? Because we're still, this area of the knife world is still very small and confusing and little is known about it. But this this is actually the case. Not many of these things exist and the demand for them is very, very high amongst extreme knife enthusiasts. And it, you know, I say extreme, it gets way crazier than this. This is right here, this is like level two of 10. <laughs> If, we're, if I'm really being honest, right, it definitely gets much crazier. But it's interesting because these represent, you know, a small window into that that territory. Um, what I find particularly interesting about this one, these uh, these patterns here, they're larger. There are bigger gaps between the circles here. I don't know exactly what they call this pattern, but you know, the cool thing about um, any type of Damascus, whether it's steel or titanium or whatever, right? Mokame, Mokatai. Right, Zerkatai, Timascus, White Timascus, right, Black Timascus, whatever you want to call it. The cool thing is the pattern is never the same. There are some um, consistencies with certain patterns. Like if you go to the Damas Steel, for example, if you go to the Damas Steel website, you can see all of the different um, patterns uh, that are available. And what they do is, you know, they'll they'll create the pattern, but the pattern is still varying. So you still get variations. It's never going to get exactly the same pattern. Any two knives, right? No two knives will be exactly the same. So this is cool. They went with bigger spacing between some of these, you know, dense circles here. And the, um, the, the individual layers of titanium and zirconium are thicker. From a distance, this actually almost, titanium cannot turn red. It, it's, it, we don't, it's not the same as like aluminum. The, the, the anodizing scale for aluminum will allow for red to actually occur on the surface, right? This titanium, it can't. The closest you can get is kind of a, orangey magenta but the different layers in this one especially when we in contrast with this it looks like in some areas it's almost getting pinkish red and the camera is doing this no justice right now in the camera all of this looks more purpley truly like in my light there's much more pinkish orange in the entire thing and it's really really impressive i can't say that i've ever seen zirkatai look exactly like this if you're wondering why I'm not wearing gloves, because you guys know I have them, Scott set me. I wear gloves with, like, like for example, this. I've already touched it, right? I always wear gloves when I'm handling the black one because it is a fingerprint magnet. This stuff, not so much. It, it does, like, dole it a little bit, anodizing, 
always dulls a little bit when you touch it, but it's so busy and there's so much going on that when you put a fingerprint on it or you get the oils from your fingers on it, it doesn't quite show as much. Same with like polished damascus steel. Everything else about the knife is essentially the same. We have the large like oversized fasteners, especially in the pivot, really cool like that. The Rotten Evo design itself is just extremely wicked looking. Um, the profile of this knife is just absolutely nasty. And you know what I like about stuff like this is that they do, I'm trying to get some of my fingerprints off of this, they do just regular production stuff, right? They do just a solid black one. And they do, a, well, this is, this is polished DLC, which makes it look really cool. I was more than happy to pay the money for this one, which I had to buy secondary because they didn't show... The pictures that they did on the website did not display the DLC like this. I had no idea it was polished. I thought it was a matte DLC, just like we've been seeing for the last how, however long, right? So I bought the stonewashed one, just the plain one, because it was the least expensive, and I just wanted the design. Still, in my opinion, uh, even considering the tier that it's in, I still felt like it was a bit overpriced. Excuse me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I went with that one, and then, you know, saw the DLC and grabbed it. But... They did a one where it was like a flat DLC and a, and a polished blade. I think they did some plain damage steel ones with no exotic material um, scales, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe a couple of other variations. So these things ranged anywhere from $600 or $650 all the way up to $1,800. And they all sold out, all of them, easily. I mean, every, every time they do a Rotten Evo whatever, they're going to sell out because the demand is massively high for them, right? Um, so really cool. And this, you know, this video is in no way me justifying this or that. It's just me stating facts. It, it is what it is, basically. This is, this is really cool. I, I, you know, I wish that the pattern, I wish that they didn't have these, the straighter lines down here, but this is just, I don't know why I'm critiquing this, but I, I really like it when the pattern is consistent. You guys have heard me say that, uh, like this, this, this pattern in the titanium, uh, Damascus here, or the Zerkatai, it is very consistent all the way through. And I really like that. Same with this guy down here, right? Really nice. This pattern, if they had kept this exact sort of, it looks like Kraken's eye in, in an ocean, right? If they had just kept that all the way through the blade, I think that would have looked really great. On this side, I think it comes down actually a little bit further. Very, very beautiful. One of the most ergonomic designs I think in existence and definitely is reminiscent of the Strider uh, SNG or SMF, which I actually have right here. You know, a lot of people say, oh, they ripped off the they ripped it off completely. Mm, did they? <laughs> if we're looking at them side by side, um, no. Uh, it has a similar, um, especially in here, ergonomic profile, but you know they're they're absolutely very very different. Um, I uh, I don't know. This is really cool, um, and so it's not you know even though the company is called Custom Knife Factory, these are not technically by definition custom knives most people define custom knives as fully handmade knives or either or that or at least partially handmade right some people say well that's mid-tech right and we get into a hair splitting argument but this to my knowledge is still fully production some people won't pay that much money for these things based on that alone um you know well if it's if it's not if it's that much money i won't pay that much money for a production knife i don't know for me it depends it depends on what it is right uh, there are benefits to, you know, paying extra money for a production version of something that is extravagant versus paying the same amount or more for something that is fully handmade in some cases, right? It's going to be case by case and it largely, again, comes down to preference when you actually graduate into this territory. By the time you are here and you're regularly buying this stuff, you develop your own very specific preferences and you can argue to the ends of the earth with other people who do or don't buy in this exact same territory. Or you can do like Scott does and just do whatever you want and not argue with anybody, right? Um, there are infinite uh, arguments and discussions to be had. This was a, a weird overview and presentation. Um, you'll get more information about the knife and the design of it in the actual overview and review. Um, but I just wanted to take a closer look at these and kind of talk about it. It was a good discussion point for me. I'm not always right. In fact, I, you know, I, there's definitely stuff that I'm wrong about or I have a – my take is a hot take. People often will disagree with me and that's fine. Um, but I, I found, I felt like people who were, you know, both new to the knife world, especially the custom knife world, and people who have been here for a long time would find this um, interesting and want to look at this stuff either way. Let me know which one's your favorite and why down in the comments. I think it'd be interesting to hear what other people have to say, as per usual. I don't know that there's a whole lot more 
um, that I can say about this. Uh, really, really cool pieces, and I'm glad that Scott allowed me to share these with you guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.